Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day, y'all. Ira Epstein of Lunar Associates with your evening financial review. And this is for March 15th, 2017. And I gotta tell you, it's called Goldilocks Day because Fed Chair Yellen hit it and hit it out of the ballpark. And I'm surprised in all honesty, you know, as a chartist, I, I just look at the chart action anyways. But if you were to ask me going in, the Fed's confirming that they're still on target for three interest rate hikes this year. And you tell me the stock market's going to go up to all time highs on that, I'd scratch my head. If you were to tell me that and you see that the dollar index drops a full penny, I'd be scratching my head. And that's where we're at on all this, scratching our head. And don't go buy these prices on the metals. They were up a lot more than that late in the day. So when they reopen tonight, they might be there as well. But as you can see in the stock indices on the weekly chart, a new all-time high. This is the rally that just hasn't stopped and it doesn't, nobody knows when it's going to stop. It just keeps moving on. As you take a look on a closing basis, you've gone from the correction in December and just take a look at this. It's monstrous in its scope. It's what, 550 points or so? A monster, monster move. It's about 10% plus for the NASDAQ since then. When we take a look at just a bar chart here, if I get rid of today's action, we were sideways. And what I pointed out is if the market gets over this, it could be another breakout. I got to tell you, until now you get under this level, <laughs> it, it, it certainly looks that way, doesn't it? In terms of the swing line, and this is a chart without the swing line on it, this is it with it. The pattern is one of a lower low and then a higher high that you just made. In addition, if we take a look at yesterday, we had an outside day down. When you take out the high of an outside day down, I label that and teach in my charting course that that is what? That's called a bear trap. And when that occurs, the market, if it stays up like it did, often either goes to the nearest key moving average or the potential of a Bollinger Band. We'll talk about that in a second here. The key moving averages, the 18-day average of close under the market, so that can't be an upside objective, as well as the 100-day moving average of closes. The objective was the upper Bollinger Band, and as I pointed out yesterday, if you take a look at this, the number here would have been 5406. The high of the day was 5400 and a half, and you went right through it like that. So it's already accomplished that. And now I just go back to saying you have a market that is now over the Bollinger Band. Only 5% of the time do markets stay over a Bollinger Band. I also have to say that the market, if we take a look, you have both numbers over 80 in the slow stochastics today. You can see them right here both numbers the day before and the day before. You now have an embedded reading. So until the red line closes back under 80, this market is in its position to start bending out and pushing this market higher. Will it do? It's going to be the big question, but that's what it's in a position to do. When we come to the Dow, it's not the same. Number one, the market didn't have an outside day. And this is the E-mini, I said Dow. You've got higher lows, higher highs, the resistance point, the 20, uh, the upper Bollinger Band, my mind's going too fast with my tongue, upper Bollinger Band, you hit it today, and what did you do? You backed away. This is how you'd expect it to act. Momentum-wise, you haven't really picked up. You're just hovering here in the 50s right now, so nowhere near the same chart as the uh, NASDAQ. In the Dow, which I spoke wrong just a moment ago, you've got the pattern here where you did not come up and make a higher high. You've been under that pattern of higher and lows, but you've had lower highs. Do you see that? Clearly, this high is higher than that one, and we haven't taken this one out yet. Momentum-wise, flat there, too. This is really a NASDAQ play, and that's the only one that it is. If we look at the Russell 2000, you have a pattern of a lower low, a higher high, resistance in this chart at the 18-day average of closes. You actually have different worlds going on in the stock indices right now, and we'll have to see which one prevails. As for the VIX, 
it got hit, fell back all the way down, but by the end of the day, it had recovered, and it's only down 0.67, and yes, it's another day where the market hits the 18-day average of closes and doesn't come out of these narrow Bollinger Bands. When we get to the 30-year bonds, coming into the day, you had an embedded reading. If you take out this high, you lose the what? You lose the swing line, which has got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. The market has hit its downside targets. The question is what to do. And if you lose the embedded reading, can you get back then up to 149.7 and no longer want to be short? And by the end of the day, that's exactly what the market did. So now you've got to be neutral, as I see it on the chart, from a technical point of view. Ten-year note. Higher lows, higher highs, right into the 18-day uh, average of closes. Again, that line in the sand. And so often I teach that if a market corrects, often it's the 18-day average that you correct to, and that's the first stall spot. Doesn't mean you can't go higher. That's the first stall spot often. Not every time, often. What do you also do? You lost your embedded reading. If we come to the dollar index, I'm telling you, I was looking at this stuff at the end of the day and just saying, wow, surprise. When we came in, the market was neutral because you had the close was over the 18-day average here. You had a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, and then when you dropped today early in the day under Tuesday's low, that pattern stayed. Now you've got a market that finished the day at 157. It's literally trading at the lower Bollinger Band, slightly under the 100-day average. Will it go further or is this area going to support it. I can't answer that at this point. Euro currency, same thing, up into the 100-day average, the upper Bollinger Band ran into a brick wall, and it is in overbought territory. So I am not prepared to say we're ready to break out to the upside and the euro, the downside and the dollar. You're caught in these Bollinger Bands and you need another day's worth of action. The British pound, you lost the embedded reading. Now, the only time you can get back these embedded readings and everything I'm showing is the next day. You'd have to fall very hard, very fast to get it done, and that puts the shorts under the gun. But on the other hand, you've reached your upside targets. The 18-day average is all that it says when you lose it that the market owes. So we'll see if there's further action. What happened in the end? You, you're correcting an oversold condition into that 18-day average of closes, and you go neutral right here. How many times am I saying neutral? Now, let you and I do some counting. Day one, two, three, four, five days in a row under the lower Bollinger Band. You often hear me say here, you can go seven, but five is really stretching it out, and you don't see seven very often. There you go. Now you still have the embedded reading, but with yesterday's action, you had an outside day down and you took out that day's high. Now, what's going to be the prevailing part? Is it this that stays embedded or does it give ground? And if it does, if price is going to reach up to the nearest key moving average, that's 5207. This could be if the market momentum comes up where the market says, hey, we've corrected enough. Don't know. Is there any reason to be long on this chart? None. I mean, that's just your hunch. But the trend has got lower highs, lower lows, any way that you want to cover it. And it's under these numbers, and it's still embedded. When I come to the gasoline market, you had already gotten to the right-hand side of this. Do you see that right there? And you're keeping that embedded reading, which is interesting. Yes, you also did the same thing here. You had an outside day down. You took out that day's high. Will you kick up any higher? I don't know, so we have to wait and see that. And in the Nat Gas, I see an overbought market that has reached upside targets. I still wonder if this is a long-term bottom. It's got the feel of it, especially with the seasonals that often go from mid-March on a general thrust to the upside into mid-June if you pay attention to the seasonality of uh, firms that uh, publish those things like more research. So I look at that all the time. Uh, I don't trade off of it. I'm, it's a tool of the other tools. So I never use one thing. And as I'm looking at this right now, uh, I would say to you, overbought, uptrend, hit the upper side. Let's see if we can do something better down the road. 
And maybe that's something better for you is getting the information that our staff writes. This is not rehashed articles. These are articles that our staff really puts a lot of effort into. Want to know, for example, on grains, uh, options. Who is the big buyer? Who is the seller? What were the quantities they were doing? What were they trying to accomplish? We have staffs that do this all day long. And they don't do it just there. They'll do it, uh, are you a sugar trader? You ever trade pivot points? We have letters on pivot point analysis. I'm doing my first video for my library on that, and that'll be an offer that I give you very shortly. But here you go. These are the different categories, and you choose the categories. You can choose them all. You can choose the ones you want. We'll send it to you for two weeks so you see what our customers get. And believe me, we have people that pay through the nose for this information. If you buy my research or you have a trading account with us, you're entitled to get this. But uh, we'd like to put it in your hand. Call us at 866-973-2077. Go to our website. You can click right up here if you want. If you're watching me on YouTube, you'll see that letter I. Click there, fill out the form. Or under us on many websites, it says click here because they frame this video. Do so, and away you go. I'm I. Rapstein. You have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.